Sure, I loved your talk. Um, I learned a lot about plants <laughs> and about <laughs> biology, and <laughs> exactly. very like impressed and with your knowledge and your ability to actually make um, this make this become real. Um, I guess just one question I had was, um, how did you discover this was your passion, and how did you kind of let it flourish and nourish it? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I grew up, like I said, in northeastern Pennsylvania, not during the Devonian period. Um, <laughs> but it was a really just wonderful environment to grow up as a kid because I did grow up in the country. And my home in particular was surrounded by field and forest. Um, I don't know if other kids in my class uh, felt the same way about nature that I did. But I wanted to go to school for art for the longest time. But all of my art was really inspired by nature and the world around me. My mom had like, like this kick-ass National Geographic magazine collection. So I just really lost myself in there. And as a kid, growing up in northeastern Pennsylvania, we really didn't travel very much. So those like National Geographics were an opportunity for me to really lose myself in like a world that was so different from my own. Um, so I wanted to go to school for art for the longest time. But really, when I started to look at what my art was really um, focused on, it was on the environment. And so I think ultimately that won over for me. And I meet a lot of uh, students and kids nowadays. I actually even asked this on my Instagram recently about um, whether it would be useful for some students to know a little bit more about if they wanted to go to school for horticulture or botany or ecological sciences, what that would be like. And it's amazing to me that a lot of students make decisions on the unknown, like on the unknown, like on the fear, I should say, of the unknown, where they're like, oh, I would maybe want to do that, but they've been talked out of their career choices in some way because somebody says that's not a good career, you're not going to have a job. And if I approached that in my own life, I probably wouldn't be in the place that I am now. And I'm not saying that there is, like, there's no one blueprint for anybody. And I think that if you're more entrepreneurial in spirit, you're more in tune with your passion, and you have that drive and that dedication to go for it, you're more likely to succeed. Or if you fail, you're not going to put that in as failure in your mind. And you're going to use it as an opportunity and experience to actually learn from that. So, um, so yeah, so I think the passion really stemmed from growing up in PA. And my dad and my mom like being very supportive of me bringing home um, weird insects and frogs and growing mold in the refrigerator in order to be able to look at it under a microscope. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, hi, that was fantastic. Thank and, you. Uh, particularly thought that was so interesting, the similarities of the root systems and the brain networks. Just wonder if you could say more about, about that. Yeah. So I don't have um, a, a graph, unfortunately, because I couldn't find one that was like large enough to put on the screen. But um, you know, our brains and roots work by these little action potentials. So you could see, if you like mapped your brain, you could see these little neurons and uh, firing in your brain. And the same thing with roots. So if you looked at the fibrous roots, and not all roots are fibrous, um, and if you looked at a brain and you kind of mapped that, you would see kind of those action potentials actually firing off in a lot of the same areas. Obviously, our brain seems to be more complex than obviously roots, but it's also because we have formed in very different environments. We're mobile creatures. We have to change with our changing environment in very quick, short-term ways. But roots are different in the sense that they are a little less mobile in their environment. And that's not always the, the true. Um, but they're grounded more into their environment. And, uh, and they have different complications that they have to actually deal with. Much in the same way that like our arteries or, a, or we have an aorta that comes from you know, our heart. And of course, if somebody chops your arm or whatever, that is really damaging. But with a plant, Plants have these little things like vascular bundles and lots of them. So if somebody nibbles on a plant stem, that plant could actually still put out energy and take in gases in order to be able to go down to the roots and the roots to be able to get the minerals up to certain places. So there are differences within obviously our physical forms, but when we're actually looking at roots and how their similarity is to be like the brain of the plant, um, that becomes quite interesting. So uh, I wish I had that graph. You could probably look at it on 
uh, for it online, but, but that is a little bit more about how roots and brains are kind of connected. And we have uh, only time for one more. Last one over here somewhere. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, just one burning little question. Uh, is, so Summer Rain, your given name. <laughs> And like, yes. how do, and do you have any siblings? I do. And what I do they do? And like, I don't know. I was just like fascinated by yes. it. The, the, root, the root of it all. So, so my dad is named Bob, <laughs> and my mom's named Diane. And they decided to get very creative with the names because it was that era. I know there's some people from that era here. Um, and my brother's name was going to be Forrest, but they named him Travis Shane. He's, he's older than I am. And then I was born, and I was born on, in the summer on a rainy day. So my mom named me Summer Rain, but R-A-Y-N-E, because his was S-H-A-Y-N-E, and she wanted to make it a little bit more creative. She thought I was going to be an artist when I grew up, so she named me something artsy. And then I got to pick my middle name, which is Hyacinth, which is the name of a flower and one of the best smells out there. And then um, my dad's name is Oaks, like of the oak trees. So... Uh, that is how, that is how the genesis of the name happened. And um, I once said this on uh, an interview, and I um, regret it because people w started to condemn my father. Um, but my dad always jokes because he's like the type of guy that you would want to go and have beer with. And uh, and he was like, there was only two solutions: you could have been a porn star or an environmentalist. <laughs> <laughs> And he's like, and I would have been happy with either. <laughs> and, uh, and then people are like, your dad is sick. And I'm like, no, my dad's funny. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so that's it. Um, uh, yeah, and then, by the way, I, if anybody really wants to engage a bit more with plants, like I said, plant one on me on YouTube. It's a labor of love. I shoot it with one other person. Um, we have a whole team of two, but we end up putting out 900 videos we, not all of them are out yet, but we've produced 900 videos this last year, so it is a true labor of love. Um, always looking for a Final Cut Pro X guru, um, because my editor will probably eventually go and graduate, so I'll put that out there. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and then, um, uh, what else was I going to say? Oh, and I, in the email you'll find, I do something called the Houseplant Masterclass. So if you really want to engage with plants, there's like no really good online way to be able to learn about houseplant care from soup to nuts. And so I'll be also be giving a discount of that in the email. But the, the, uh, the code is going to be creative morning. So I'm just going to share that with you right here. So thank you so much, guys. You've been awesome.